Hello everyone, it's Jack from Visual Effects Up. So today we're going to be looking at recreating these three shots from Arrival. So to start off our scene, we just need a little person and we need a box. So looking at the reference, we could probably fit three humans and a bit. And maybe a little bit less. And it's super wide. So we're going to just recreate our camera now. So let's just go. So we do the wide first. It probably is a 20, 35 mil, but let's just shoot 28 for now. No, it is 35. So we'll, st we'll stick with 35 mil. And just get this fundamental stuff right first. So now, person, just check it's on the ground. So in terms of scale, that's looking okay. Just probably just make it less tall. So now, what we need to do is now we're in here, we can probably just lock the camera, so we'll just go to rigging and protection, so the camera can't move now. And it should be a relatively simple model, because their ship is pretty basic. So what we'll do, is we will just make this object editable, we want to select the ring selection, so just around the edges. And then we want to just go inside, and then let's just bevel these corners. And this is, as it's a simple model, let's not skimp on to and the round edges, so let's just really crank that value up. Because there's nothing else really major going on. So we've got no excuse to not make it smooth, ready for displacement. So the other thing I would probably do is I would separate this and we'll call this glass. This is because we might or might not need it and it's better to have it as a separate object just in case. So for now we'll turn it off and we will also start to get our lighting right. So let's just open a live window hit render so what we can see is even with path tracing on we don't want any light coming from there really we want full control over this so we need to just pause it for now go into our settings we might as well change some of these up now so we'll go to 2000 there's not much for the light to bounce off apart from the four corners but it's all dark so we'll just say four bounce is max or three and we'll drop these down to 8. Do static noise, we'll do AI light. And we'll do adaptive sampling. Bring that up to about here-ish. The last thing I'd do is go into environment and we want to make this black. So we've got no light, so we've got to make the whole thing ourselves. So there we go. So what I want to do is I'm going to create an area light and then let's just see what that looks like. Perfect. So it's facing the right way, which is great. Nice start. Just pull it outside and we want to make this the size generally of this window. And pull it far back so that we can have that blasting through um, smoke and stuff later on. 
So just make it so it fills. And then make another one. Make this one smaller. Turn the big one off for now just to get this right. I want to make this a lot smaller. So this is the one that will be precise. And create that slight coming down of light that we need and then turn it towards us a bit so yeah and then the two together can't see what's going on that's cool for now so we'll just turn the big one off because that one's probably not going to be that important for now and we'll put both of these off surface brightness we'll make it a thousand watts and even the big one will probably make that about 800 watts. But we'll turn it off again. Cool. So that's pretty much the base of the ship made. So we'll pause that now. And what we'll do is we want this texture, alien soil, because that's the closest we've got on our shop. Um, these textures are actually going to be going through an update. So any of the smaller balls that you'll notice will be updated eventually to slightly improved textures because some of the legacy textures, there's about 200 of them. Um, they're still good, but not as good as some of the newer ones. So they're going through an update. But for now, we're just going to use the one that's on the shop. So we'll call this material ship organic because it does look a bit woody and it does look a bit weird. So what we want to do is we just want to double click in this. We will import all the maps although we probably don't need them all. So I just drop the diffuse in. We'll drop the roughness in. We don't need the opacity because there is none. Metallicness will leave, normal will definitely do. Specular level, again, we'll control that ourselves. We might even control the buffness ourselves. And this one that is just imported as well. Displacement, crucial. And then just drop it on. Make it 4K, and we'll play with that in a bit. Probably make it. 30 centimeters high for now see what happens and we'll change this to octane and we'll change this to standard material go to a render view send it to render and then let's just drop this texture that we just made onto the cube this is gross bubbly bubbly so from arrival you'll notice it's tiny tiny fines and quite sharp so we need to all this a lot more than what it already is so if we just set it to cubic for now and then probably less than that we probably can afford to displace this little bit less so we'll go down put 25 let's see what happens if we go really low 16 I quite like it more displaced and just refine this texture a bit more so I'm quite liking what's happening up here but not necessarily down here so we could just for ease select these two faces and store selection and we'll call it top and bottom so now if we drag that on to the cube as well, but then just put that selection in. So it would just be those two. So we've got control over the top and bottom separately now. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy with the sides. So we can really hone in the locks that we're after. Because it is quite stretched like that. Because we're working inside the cube, make sure we highlight all polygons and reverse the normals. Should get something a bit more realistic looking. 
So we've got something that looks pretty cool. So the blueness we can do in the grade. So if we aim to just create everything as a normal colour, however, we do need to change the way that the light bounces on these areas, although some of it can be done in 2D. So let's just sort our lighting out. So now we've got all the light, just so we can quickly see. We're going to change the displacement just to 0.5 to tuck it in back to where it should be. And we also, because Octane hasn't sorted this issue yet, uh, just duplicate the layer outside so that we get rid of these little. So without it, you're getting a leak here, but we don't want that. So we want that to be covered. Okay, so that is that. Well. So this is kind of a fill light, so we'll lower that down a little bit and we'll boost this one even more, so 1500 maybe. And we really want to start getting shape because this is all quite even and we kind of want to lose some brightness here and here. So to do that we could just turn that off for now. Start by shrinking the light. You want it to drift off towards it, come and gets towards the camera. So we've got that kind of thing. Obviously we've still got our fill. So that's creating that burst now. But what we want to do is we really want to refine this texture. So it looks a bit wet because it's got a semi wet organic look to it. Whereas this looks quite dry. So to do that, we're probably just going to go back into our settings of our material we've made. We'll probably just delete the roughness because we can control it ourselves. And we need to just go in and just add a bit of that roughness back. Specularity, we'll probably just knock it down to about 8.8 .8. and the reflection it doesn't look real so let's go to we'll probably not use the diffuse either but we will need to make that bright darker again so if we put 0.4 Point four and point four, or a bit lower still. So we'll go point one. Try that; it might be too dark. Point one. This is for the color of the fuse channel. Yeah, it's probably going to be useful if it was grey. So point two, point two, and point two. Okay, so. If we just change this to widescreen, what we'll notice as well is that isn't as tall and thin, so we will keep tweaking the shape. So if we just squish it just a little. And we'll probably knock our fill down again until we get our volume in. So what we're noticing as well now is they've just got this horrible line that's not actually good. I mean, it's not seamless on this film either, but we will try our best to see what we can do. So if we just change it to UV mapping, it might work out better. There we go. Something along like that. There we go. That kind of blends a lot nicer now. Just a bit more like the actual arrival one. So we just want to go outside again quickly just to make sure. We can probably bring it closer and higher just so it really does create just a little puddle of light. So in terms of roughness, it's almost correct. So if we just put 0.45, that might be enough. And specularity, we will probably just knock down to 0.5. And then let's just go back into our IOR. Let's just see what happens if we put 1.8, 1.7. We just don't want these highlights bleeding out because none of the highlights on arrival bleed out because they're part of the look. So to aid this, we're just going to go into our camera imager as well and pull down the highlights to help create that arrival look so nothing's peaking. I would quite like, because it's not happening, unfortunately. Let's see what happens if we do bring this down a little. So we're going to have to fake it. 
So we've got our light up there. I'm going to have to copy it and bring one down so that I can get some on the ceiling too, but not a lot. Don't want a lot on that ceiling, just enough to like make it look a little bit more 3D. So again, we'll shrink it down. Let's just turn that one off for now and just get, so we've got this top. We'll lock the camera and come out of the camera so we can keep flashing with this to get it right. Ended up almost bending the light on itself. There we go. And it's definitely coming more from that side, but just subtle. And we kind of don't want it to be as bright, so we'll make that 800 in brightness. Maybe less, 400 in brightness. 400 watts, there we go. And then, boop, bring that one back and bring our fill. So we've got all our lights creating a bit of variation. And I have slightly changed my mind again. We're going to knock the displacement down just a little. 18. So this light's visible now, so we just need to make it invisible. Just by knocking the opacity down. So there's a lot of options for doing this volumes. I'd personally do it in for the wide shot in 2D. But let's get it set up ready for the close-ups. So for the volume, I'm going to have to test which ones are going to work. There's one more thing we need to do to this texture as well. We'll do that in a bit. So we'll go to objects. We'll create a VDB volume. And this is going to be a bit experimental. It's not done it in advance. So far I'm moving cloud 7. Oh, actually the tire smoke would work really well. Tire smoke 7 because it's slow motion. So... We'll do that. So I'm using a medium quality because it's a wide. So let's get it set up. And like always, we need to just put it on frame 800, for example, just so we can see what the, where the volume's at. Make sure you press calculate. And it's probably going to need to scale it up massively because they never come in right size. So the reason I am using the tire smoke is because one, it's slow motion, and two, it's quite wispy and magical. So we will spin that round and spin that round again. We don't want to see the circle that we'd normally put around the tire, though. So let's just go inside and move that tire. Okay, so we have got a slight issue here, so we might need to change the way we've lit this. So because of the where that light is, it might need to come inside. We want these all set to density, and we want to jump in and just change the thickness of this smoke, because from the reference, it's very just like powdery. So we just want to go into a volume, probably make it 50% dense. Went to probably about 800, so there's still a little bit of thickness to it, maybe 30 on that. And then what we'll do Boom. is we'll jump out of our camera again. We will... Copy our VDB volume. There's no box anymore. Um, and then we need to see it. Sorry, it's hard to use this on one screen. So we've got two of these volumes now. We'll just spin one the other way around. Although it looked quite magical. We'll, we'll blow it up a little bit, this one. Yeah, although it'd look quite magical than both running at exactly the same time. We should probably offset one of them. So if we just go in again. Let's 
turn the other one off just so we can see what we're doing. And we will offset this by 250 frames. See, probably did more than that if it's slow mo. So 300 frames, so it's 300 frames behind the other one. So they'll always look different. So we just create one last volume. And in this one, this one's a static one. So you can use any of our 3D hazes for this. So again, come out to the camera. So this one's just a general nice haze that we can just add to any scene. So if we just put that, kind of need to see what's going on with that outside of this environment. So it's just a simple one, that one. So it's just, yeah, okay. So for that, then we need it to be raised up. Pushed out the window. And what we'll see is because this one is quite nice as well, it feathers towards the top. So that's quite nice. Blow it up a little bit. And if we really want to, which I would, is I duplicate it again. Turn them all off for again, just for a little bit. And bring some light smoke to the inside. And we'll probably spin it around so it's denser towards the top of the ceiling. And we want this to be very, very subtle. So this is like 10. This will just help us blast through. So we might need to turn that light off again. That's an annoying one, that light. So all together with all the volumes, We might need to make this one again quite subtle if we want to see the motion of these other two. So let's jump into that. Maybe even less, so 20. We'll call this outside window haze, inside haze. So we're just keeping it organized. Tire right and tire left put all our lights together uh. and a really simple scene so for lighting now we're going to try a little trick because we've got volumes in we can potentially hopefully blast that light through the vdbs it might create enough patches for us that we need so by making this super intense so if we just times that by 13 so it's definitely coming brighter from that side, which is good. It's just that ceiling that we're not getting anymore. So maybe that, that ceiling light just has to be outside. Let's turn them off. It does mean it's going to affect that volume. 1,200. And on the tire right, we don't like to be as thick because quite of these are quite dense again, so we're going to have to go 15 and 1,000. So what we're noticing is we're blending into the corners here, which is not good. So what we're going to try and do now is push these volumes back just a little bit in 3D space. We really don't want them to blend. 
so in there they need to be blown up again. And again, we're probably going to make them more subtle, so it's literally a balancing game with this, so to just make our life easier on thousand potentially. Glad that volumes can all sit together now. So we're just changing the haze by changing the number. It's quite a quick way, that's why it's all done like that. The thing that is still not working for me is that Perfect. So what we want to do now, we want to create some variation in colour. So for this we can use any rock texture really, but just on the albedo channel. Because it looks rather boring. We can use the beach transition tarmac. All we need is the base colour. We might need to just double check what's going on and it's not repeating like crazy, so let's turn our camera on. And look inside. Again, you could do this with a procedural noise, but we use the alien so because it's one of our textures. Um, what we'll do then for this is we'll use a transform node and just scale the colour only. So you can see now that we've got a bit more variation in these. So there's a brown orange. Well, untick the aspect ratio as well and get it so it stretches properly in line 12 there we go so we'll have more variation in colour so there's definitely pockets of different colours now so if we open that up that will also create another variation which is quite neat so what we'd like to do now is just render this out as a sequence. So we'll need a post processing, AO, and in this case we will want reflection AOV. So for the post, just jump in. And bloom. Cut it off just a bit there. So we've got a bloom pass as well. Glare and glare blur. We can add a spectral intensity and a slight shift so it's more green. Match the grade. The AO was probably not that important, but we're just doing it anyway. Reflection is because we can change the amount of reflection thus. Okay, so we just set that off to render. So on the export, you can see that it's quite, the ground is quite repetitive. Like the sides I don't really care about because it kind of works. What we could have done to help is we could have used some triplanar methods, potentially even mixing two materials, two different displacements, also using the chaos node, but also using AI in Photoshop, just highlighting certain sections and creating different variations. But all we've done in this instance is we've just played with the texture, moved it along, made it less displaced, and then just rendered another version and just masked areas to create variation. So there's a little bit more variation in the texture. Whilst we wait for that to render, we'll quickly make a bird cage. So I'll have two cubes, turn one off for now, and we will instantly make it editable. Clone all sides. It's a bit thinner than that. Poke in. Poke out. And then delete. So now we just need to use this cube to fill in all the gaps. It 
duplicate it again to make the make the ground just tucking it in and then just use these this one for the beams so in arrival the thickest beams are the ones in the middle but horizontally so we'll do these ones first and we'll place that there we want to make sure the bird can see so probably one centimeter thick we use a cloud now to save loads of time Put that in the clone app, change it to a linear, don't reset the coordinates. Never the right way started in a way, so just change that to X. Not the amount up, probably too many for a bird to fly, so if we reduce that so it's just 34 and then spread it, that might be enough. We will reduce the height just a little bit so it's not tucking through. And then we'll need to copy this. One spoke. Spin this round to 90 degrees. And make this taller. Make sure it sits in the middle. And then we can call that. Great. And we will just instance that. So if we do decide to change any settings, at least it'll change on all the other sides because we've used instances. Uh, and one more. Cool. So that's our kind of cage. I assume, can't remember, if we do that on the top, it might be acceptable. So the only thing left to do now, really, with this cage is just get a bevel, put it in the grate. Point two and a subdivision of one. So let's just rounded all the corners and then get that as well and put it on the actual outside of this one. We can be like point four four for this one now. So it's just curving these corners. And add another subdivision. But do you carry it in with a handle, so we'll just quickly do that. So we created, created that using the end side, made it editable, and then we will use a cylinder, well, sorry, a circle, and then a sweep to make a cylindrical. Knock that down to one, maybe two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pick these two points, bring it down a bit, and get them further away from each other. I'm just play with these until we get one that we're happy with. Yeah, that kind of shape's better. Tuck these in. Strain it up. And get those points again. 
took him in a little bit. Cool. I'd normally spend a lot more time on this model, but because it's literally a tiny model in the back, well, in the foreground of a shot that's tiny, I'm not spending ages on it. And then the last thing, again, proving that it's not spending time on it, is just use a cylinder for the handle. Real rushed job. And... Make it longer. Like this. Make it editable. We'll use this to select. And we'll just use the bevel and just create some kind of weird shape out there so it looks like a handle. You, mm, we will we'll bevel it again. With more subdivisions. So it creates a handle. That's a bit Star Wars-y, so we'll shrink it down just a little bit. And we'll probably, just to make it symmetrical, uh, just tuck that in. Cool. So that's a bird cage model. Really, really rough. So I'll group it and call it birdcage. We'll copy it, paste it in our scene. It is quite tiny in shot. So we just add our person in as a reference to make sure that we know that we're on to the right scale. Yep. The birdcage is angled like that. Not too fussed that we've already sent this to the render because no moving VDB is in here so we'll just render this separately. And then from a lazy perspective you could just use an octane metallic material but just adjust the roughness so it's 0.33 or something. Paste it on the whole thing. So the next thing for us to do is to jump in and set an other camera. So the other camera that we set up was a 50mm and we was a lot closer. So this will probably just be for reference rather than actual use because we'll probably do some 2D compositing and then some 3D volume rendering and then add that in as well. Get a bit of the top and bottom in just in case we need to use it but I shouldn't imagine we would. So just render that one out whilst we set up the other camera. So the other camera is also a 50mm. So that's just rendering just white. But that is from the perspective of the glass. But not through the volume. It's quite clear that they do that on arrival. Just to probably help feel that it grounded. So they do shoot quite shallow. For those shots, so we'll go into our 50mm and it is supposed to be anamorphic so we'll just change our aspect ratio of 2 to 2 aperture edge just a little bit to make it a bit more vintage and we'll change our f-stop to we'll start with 2 until we see what we're getting we can get that bird cage in the back awesome and we'll probably bring our little man back just for scale and to even bother not to even worry about focusing later we'll just put that into the focus object and then turn it off so the next shot we'll set up ready will be 
arrival face. And we will potentially change the scale of this texture so it doesn't look as, diff as different. Okay, and then we'll render that out. So we'll just drag a wide shot first. Use extractor and get a beauty. And so we know we're on the same page as the film. Let's put on our crop bars. So we assume that this is going to be standard Rec 709 colors. So that's exactly what it looked like on set pretend if it really existed. So when we use when we put in our footage, so put in our footage, it, we've got it graded so that it matches that. So here is our disgusting footage. So as you'll see, we've got two massively bright LEDs pointing towards the subject. We have this flag, as well as some black material behind the camera to help block light so lots of people are see do's these sort of cg renders miss this one massive thing and that is blocking the light <clears throat> so they've got, they put the light in the right place and the light direction is coming from the right place but then also if it's a fairly dark scene towards camera it would be quite dark so if you notice there's no real major light on the back of this subject here so that's partly that and then we've got another light bouncing up at the ceiling bring in the brightness of the blue screen up a little bit so because we had the light sources there and it was quite bright we needed to kind of help brighten that but without brightening this too much and because it was such a tight space that's what we had to deal with and again because for some reason since the update footage in after effects seems to be darker so let's just denoise first and knock the ISO up to 800 and make the exposure about 0.5. Okay. So wait for that to brighten up and we can mask out. So we'll probably start the clip possibly around there. Maybe a little bit later just because we didn't have much space so in terms of scale if we're right up by that screen it needs to be about that big so we'll set up our lumetry get these colors looking close to normal as possible 25 lift the shadows and make it possibly brighter and then we will need a key light intermediate result drop it on we will turn the key cleaner off and we will need potentially search for it whilst it's still key and soft matte refine sweet so well, let's just go to our screen mat see what's going on i'm going to clip black and then clip white and then intermediate result Want the advanced spill suppressor on unless it takes out some of the orange and then we want to refine the mat so there we go so now we just need to add a shadow so we'll do that with red giants shadow visual effects plugin 
So I want it to fade over time. And we also want it to be relatively soft. So what we need to get making it look like a rival is we need light wrap. So let's perfect this using all the passes. So we need to have ambient occlusion potentially. We'll turn that off for now. We need a post processing and potentially the reflection pass. So the reflection pass will do a linear dodge. So that's just if we need to make any parts more shiny than others. And the ambient occlusion pass, which is a bit gross. Might not need that to be honest. Let's just see what happens if we multiply it. It does add something. We'll just split the difference. So we'll 25 the whole thing. And then we will have the reflection. But we will just hand pick some sections that we want to be more reflective. So turn them off now and F on all these. Feather it a little. Put that on and then put that on. And we'll probably do another one. Feather that too. Cool. So we've got this, the choice of being able to add these extra bits of shininess. We can pop in and change these later too. And then we'll add the bloom. So that just adds that lovely layer. Cool. So now we need to pre-compose this and call this Rival BG. So now we just want to add some light wrap, but because we've done quite a lot to this, it's probably not going to see it. So we just need to call this person and we have all attributes. So we've got add cutate. We just want to add some light wrap to the person. And not the width down just a little bit. We solo the wrap on another layer so we can have control of it. So we just want to reduce that width a little bit more. Keep tweaking it until we're happy. Might need to tweak this mask a little bit more. And probably because this plugin is a bit clunky, we'll probably just have to curve this. So that it creates a bit of a weird dynamic. This is about the only film where you could get away with doing so much light wrap. That'll work out, something like that maybe. Well, do we want to create that vignette again? Subtract. Feather. And because of the nature of this film, we kind of want to make it feel a bit more claustrophobic than normal. And we want to blend that with soft light. And we would like to create a new adjustment layer. So we'll go in and pick a color grade that we like. Triune films do do this arrival grade. So let's just use this, although it doesn't really work for this scene. But what we'll notice is Arrival is significantly more blue and green, so we'll start to pull the temperature. 
and start tinting the shadows slightly blue as well. Then we'll drop a tritone on. And I'll pick somewhere in the almost teals. So our silhouette is quite orange. And that's throwing it off a little bit because it probably would be darker. But with the wrap, let's go in, add a curves. Before the light wrap. Oh, this needs to be on the bottom layer. And the colour is pretty desaturated on the real version. So we use a tritone again. But we kind of want to make sure that we still get a bit of orange, so we'll just pick a brown. So in terms of this shot and what's not making it look as cinematic at the moment is them blowy out highlights so we'll pull them down a bit we'll pull the whites down a little bit pull the shadows down a little bit but also let's jump into our arrival comp and sort out some slightly darker patches So to do that again, we'll use curves and generally draw some areas that we'd like to be darker. If we do generally just a thin one there, it might just bring the highlights down generally of everything. So if we just highlight them all again and feather them out. So we've got variation now. So it's not just a solid patch. So if there's a bit of a nice organic pattern going on. The other thing I'd quite like to do is bring down them reflections just a bit. And potentially duplicate that bloom layer. And then add an adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do now is add a bit more colour on this particular comp. So if we use the tritone, I'm going to go for like a, a TL again. Got Then also, we're going to duplicate that and we're going to go for a lighter colour, so it's a more green. And we're going to introduce just strips of colour into this somewhere. Again, try not to be too thorough with it and thinking about it because it'll all look fake. Feather that in. So there's pockets of different spectral shifts looking now. So if we just go back to our arrival scene. See how it's looking now. We've made those changes. Might be a bit too dark. Let's see. Oh no, it's quite nice. It's definitely a little bit more atmospheric. So what we'll do now is we'll duplicate the arrival wide, call it arrival close, and just swap things over. So actually, so we're pretty much starting from scratch. So let's go into the close, put in our shot. So if we just go to our arrival wide, open this,
actually and paste that in instead highlight all of these and then swap that for the close and then the channels will all be the same so now we need to import our close so again let's bring them bars up and the vignette and bring in our footage so that will be this one scale it down cut out dead straight lines and we want lumetri so in terms of scale we're probably a bit there which means we need to scale everything up and pre-compose close arrival so move that down so we're not getting any of that and then we will make sure that this again is brightened up within the raw settings because for some reason it comes in darker denoise and we'll bring it up to ISO 800 okay and then within Lumetri we need to just add our look to get the colors back to normal and then our lovely key light again this is quite close so we may not need the anything special this one so the reason we use blue if you hadn't gathered already because it's a darker scene and we've got orange and we've got someone with blonde hair so it's potentially better at avoiding any weird blending of the colors but also because this camera in particular the red raptor can actually deal with a blue channel quite well was a no go for digital cameras in the past but now it's okay so we soften the key just a bit pre-blur by one but nothing too major we'll do a suppressor but I shouldn't need it and we will refine the mat additional edge reduce chatter okay so now that is the key done for this shot so we'll pre-compose this as actor underscore close. Bring in our background again. And what we'll do, whilst it's deciding what it's doing, we'll go into our person and just potentially pinch these bits of colour grade in. Drop it on. The only other thing required is the light wrap if we want to put it on, and we probably will. So we will duplicate our actor close. Can turn these off. And we'll go for light wrap again. Drop it on. We want to just wrap solo and blend with screen. And the background is close arrival. With effects and masks. Because we're quite close this time, potentially 25, but can't tell yet because it's not rendered. So there's a lot of things going on on here. So let's just turn this off for now. Okay, so that's looking a bit nicer. That's looking right. And 
and the bars back. This vignette is crazy too big because it's supposed to look bright, but we do kind of want it in the bottom of frames. So it looks like we're looking at the edge. That probably needs to be way brighter at the top. And we'll pull down both these actors. But again, this is probably going to need being brighter because we're a bit closer, so we don't want it to be fully silhouetted this time. But again, we're making sure that we do not crush them highlights because that is not the vibe of the rival. We can introduce a bit more colour on the close up. And a bit more of a dynamic. So that's the close up done, is just the front on shot. So this one is quite boring in comparison and relatively simple. So we just need to, if we do the same again, so we create a new comp. I'm going to call this Arrival Front Face and for laziness we can just copy all the background elements from another shot swap it with the face and for some reason that depth of field has not worked so we're gonna have to do it ourselves so layer adjustment and because it's quite flat anyway it's fine for this shot if it was moving that would be disappointing we need to set it off to render again so we want to gain threshold just so we get some shape so the aspect ratio of 0.5 ish and there we go and so a little background for this front shot so now we just want to pre-compose this back head drop face and we bring that shot in scale it down again pick the part of the shot that we want probably just from there same old so we'll just crop in none of this nonsense that we don't need key light turn it all off for now get rid of the key cleaner and um, we'll add refined matte so that'll be needed because we've got depth of field and we will need lumetry at the top of all this so we we want to just add our LUT. It is red, but the S-Log LUT works for this. And add a bit of contrast. Pick a blue. Key it out. That works pretty straight away, to be fair. But let's have a look what's going on to make sure we've got no ugliness. This is the beauty of having a perfect background. But sometimes if you do using specific lights, like for the other shots, it's going to be hard to get that background to be perfectly blue. So we'll just do a tiny tweak because there's a bit here. But because it's blue, it might get hidden anyway. So what we've got is this lovely de uh, detail up here as well. Absolutely amazing. Great, another reason for shooting raw. It's just individual hairs and with no effort. Um, Intermediate result. The recite if oh that's already on cool and then we'll go advanced spill suppress that. So there we go. And our backdrop on. Okay, it's probably gonna need a bit more clean up here. That's okay. Fifteen. Nineteen. So what we're going to do now is we want to just take our color grading and that one to see where we're at. I 
we'll take these colored bits that we did on the wide but also this time we're going to need to brighten this up because it's quite dark so curves there's a little bit of atmosphere but again they didn't actually go super crazy on this specific shot that i'm referring to although i can't really see it because it's compressed to death on youtube and probably go a little bit brighter still this is quite nice we'll have a bit of a strip of colors so what we need now is to potentially combat in the grade this blue because she's standing by a white light so to do that we're just going to add some warmth add some pink and potentially add a whole exposure jump so what else we need to do is we need to make sure this key is perfect we don't really want high well, it, we can let it feather out more than we would normally and to feather it soft make it softer here because we are blown into the background and stuff is slightly out of focus here so we do kind of want that to blur on the edges a little bit we'll clip the blacks more with the like 26 and potentially roll back the clip or shrink but we'll use shrink so minus five and the softness to eight because it's still not blurring enough there we go it's a lot darker nice so on the show don't really see that cage so we'll push that out of the way yeah i suppose that's okay i just would prefer this bit to be a bit darker but it's not right so let's go in optical glow we can add this to everything and we'll kind of want this to be probably two might need to change it might be still too much with quite a widespread highlight roll off and highlights only so it creates that real big glow that we've got going on maybe maybe three perhaps not that much that looks a bit retro 2.5 or 2.2 so that's the three shots so part of the tutorial as well i've included a vdb for free that you can download and potentially learn how to use vdbs and then if you love them then keep coming to the shop and buy more because that would be sound so here is the vdb imported So we just want to make it big, so we'll go furlongs again, density, make sure we're not on frame zero because there's nothing there, and then there's only 299 frames, so we just need to be in the middle somewhere for a good indication of what this is. Here it is. We'll probably go smaller. So what we're going to do is we're going to render this but when we composite it in after effects because it's a fluid simulation it's going to obviously be accurate so it's going to go the right way so we need to export it as a rendered transparent volume and then reverse the animation so that it actually builds into the language so as you can see roughly about 60 is a good starting point for this so we will just crank up the density to something like 500 and then to 15% maybe so we've got this kind of effect going on let's make it a bit thinner 
Okay. Okay, so like you could do multiple versions of these, but that's pretty much all we're going to do for this. Because we don't necessarily need anything special, actually we do, let's make it more cinematic, so we kind of want path tracing to be on. And let's add a light. Let's push that behind the volume and make it higher so it's not in the shop. So unfortunately, because of the nature of this, we're going to have to have a light at the top and a light at the bottom. Because what will happen is you can't render a transparent background if there's a light right behind the volume. So let's get the camera set up. And a bit higher on that one. Okay, so. So we want to do path tracing. Don't need to be ridiculous. We just need probably about 500 samples. Five, five, and then two. AI light to speed up the render time. Static noise. Turn keep environment off. Alpha channel. And then let's just render that out. So we don't need any other passes really. We do need beauty. We do need it to be transparent, but that'll be na the nature of the EXR. And we do want... We could make it 1280 by 1280, so it's a bit bigger than 1080. That'd be nice. All frames from 0 to 299. And then just render. So, back in... To... After Effects. Let's go on the close shot and add it here. So, we've just got the volume exported, so let's just import that now. Import as a sequence. And just drop it in behind the actor. So it was done with the lovely EXRs. So we need extractor. Drop that on. And there should only be one pass. And that should be the beauty. So there we are, there is a lovely language. So what we want to do is we just want to right click it and go time and reverse. Plunk it in like so. Because we've got the light coming through at the back as well, it looks really cool. Yeah, that's fine for us. What we will do as well is we will have a transparency, just very subtle. Probably starting from here at about 60%. So it gradually, not only does it fade in with the volume render, but then it will also form and fade at the same time. We could actually, sorry, one, one last thing, have an optical glow over that too, if we want to. But it looks quite nice as it is. But let's see what it does just in case. It does magically make it pop just that little bit more. So we just put that on. Maybe two. Spread it across. Can't really do highlights only because there's no highlights. And then let's just see if that blends it in even better. Uh, so it's, it's got rid of that, so we just need to extend. So the... The glow 
is quite nice because it preserves the original alpha but actually brings some of it forward and pops some extra detail in. Depends whether you wanted that though. So I guess we'll just put 0.5 and split the difference, so 150. It's, it's nice. But we might lose the shape. We probably need to look at the end frame. Okay, we will keep the optical glow on to help. So yeah, that's how you do this effect and hopefully you found this tutorial massively helpful. And I'll catch you on the next one.